And that's a German band you've probably never heard of, but definitely should have. That is a band called Fex. F-E-X, and uh, the song is called A Jenny, and it was actually part uh, of a Zeus compilation, Zeus uh, uh, local performers uh, in Germany uh, back in the early 80s, and that a great song, too, and it's kind of our lead-in to uh, our special feature tonight. We have an exclusive interview. We're going to hear, you know, a song or two throughout this interview as well with one of the members of that band, Fex. Um, name is Michael Hadrick, and we're going to hear this because uh, this one of their songs, one of Fex's songs, was part of a worldwide internet search for the last probably 20 to 25 years at least. And uh, it all started back around 2007 uh, when I guess uh, someone uh, over in Germany uh, had posted a song to a, a, like a song, one of those song help forums uh, to try to find out what the name of this particular song was. And nobody could figure it out. You know, Shazam didn't work. It wasn't available on any kind of, you know, uh, CD obviously wasn't around back then, but any kind of vinyl or any kind of cassette, uh, at least that we knew at the time. And it started just this worldwide Internet search where nobody could figure out what it was. All they knew was that it was played on a German radio station called NDR, which I believe is a public radio station over there. And uh, they have a lot of variety programming like we do. But it was it was never in their archives. They never had any, um, you know, they ne were never able to find the song. And the song became known affectionately as the most mysterious song on the internet. And if you were to go out there and uh, go to Google and Google all of this, you'll find, you know, Reddit forums and YouTube videos that have thousands and thousands of views about, you know, who recorded this song. And I was fortunate enough and very thankful as well uh, to be able to do an interview uh, with one of the band members of Fex, Michael Hadrick, and uh, we are going to hear uh, bits and pieces of that interview right now. Enjoy, everyone. This is the After Hours Cafe on RDV, and this is an RDV exclusive interview. I guess my first question, um, so I, I know you guys recorded this this most mysterious song on the internet so long ago. Um, had you thought about the song, you know, over the last, you know, 40 years or so before this big search was started, and were you, were you aware that so many people were looking for it? Uh, well, definitely we weren't aware, otherwise <laughs> this uh, would have never lasted such a long time. Uh, you, you need to consider, I mean, the search, I think, was only 70, 17 years long, but the song is 41 years old. Wow. That's a whole lifetime, yes. So we, we recorded it in 83, 1983. So <laughs> probably most listeners weren't born at that, <laughs> at that time. I was three so, years old. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yes, um, it, it came as an absolute surprise um, i heard the first time i heard about it was on saturday last week um, not not this uh, this last week the week before it, so it's um, like nine days old <laughs> uh, that we know it and it was because the uh, um, dutch uh, reddit user marijan 1412b <laughs> he uh, contacted me and said can you send me some demo tapes of your bands that you had at that time. There the, were two bands, Fred and uh, Fax. And uh, naively, I just dug in my old <laughs> uh, demo tape case and digitized them, sent it to him. And then on Saturday night, he um, sent me an email saying, aren't you aware this, that this is the most mysterious song on the internet? <laughs> and at first, I didn't grasp the scope of this. Yes, I said, okay, I'm going to look at it later. <laughs> so on Sunday, I looked at it, and it was just overwhelming. Unbelievable. So I contacted, immediately I contacted the band members. So with Tura, I only was observing his career remotely, just to see what he's doing. With Norbert, the bass player, I had quite good contact. He visited me um, last year here in Munich. So, um, yeah, we talked about old times and so on, but um, except for like once every 10 years, cleaning up the demo tapes and then looking at, oh, I did this at that time. Uh, we didn't, we weren't really aware, neither of the hype nor of uh, the song uh, reaching so many people. Now, obviously, it was a was a surprise for you. How did your how did your former or your bandmates how did they react to it? Well, the, the funny thing is that in the same week, 
Turrell, the um, lead singer, was contacted in parallel from a Czech, um, Czechian uh, Reddit user in the US. So uh, when I uh, telephoned Turrell, he already knew that something was going on. And then on Sunday, we decided we um, gave it free so that they can uh, reveal the case. Yes, because uh, they, they were the Reddit user were so nice saying they are not going to reveal it unless we, um, uh, we uh, give permission to do so. So they waited until we discussed this in the band. And then, but then it immediately exploded. I meant to ask you too because I heard on a YouTube video that the the band fret that you were in. Did you have a band in Philadelphia, PA, by the same name? Because we're yes, we're I, was, not to yes, interrupt you. I'm, ac I'm actually I'm actually located in the Philadelphia suburbs, so that's why I'm curious. You know what where yes. the Philadelphia connection is here. You're absolutely right. Um, I was uh, uh, studying at Penn State University in 8081, and. Um, I was fortunate to be able to form a band uh, in the uh, Pennsylvania region with two fantastic musicians, a drummer and a bass player, who was able to sing all these high-pitched voices like Led Zeppelin and so on. And we were touring the clubs in uh, Pennsylvania under the name of Mr. Fred. Mr. So, Fred, okay, uh, interesting. Mr. Fred, that was the band's name. I still have uh, newspaper articles about it. And this, for me, really was an extremely good training for live performances. Uh, the, the professionality of the music business in the U.S., uh, the, the club scene, the availability to get gigs, this was just fantastic. And we were playing like three nights a week, and it, it, it just was an, a very nice experience for me. Oh. So, so then you, you had obviously Fex in, in Germany, where, you know, of course, Subways of Your Mind, I know, was the big song now. Um, was your music ever officially released, or was it kind of like part of a, a local band search, kind of an unsigned thing kind of back then? Like, how did that all come about? Yes, well, Fex, of course, uh, it was a. I would consider it a semi-professional band. We couldn't live from it, so we had to, had to work on the side. Um, we had to pay for our practice room, and the practice room was cold. <laughs> uh, but um, we, we were happy and very um, enthusiastic, and also, I think, very professional. Like we were on time for the practices, and uh, we um, followed quite intensively. Um, and it was a local phenomena, definitely the band. And then we won the contest on the Herfest. This was a band contest, and with um, this uh, winning the the contest, things got a little bit better. Uh, we got an agency that promoted us. They even um, made a little tour for us in Northern Germany for two weeks. And we recorded in the practice room, Some Ways of Your Mind, Heart and Danger, and uh, some other songs as a pre-exercise um, to go into the studio. And the, the studio was, then was a professional studio to record some ways of your mind. And this is where the internet version is from. And I think this was paid at that time from the agency. So okay. the agency believed in us. They invested in paying the, the studio. And um, I, even though it's so far back, I remember so vividly our time in the studio because it was so special for us to work in a professional studio and uh, this this was a fantastic time and then we had this one gig that was the biggest gig for us ever where we played the pre 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 opener for eric burden oh wow. and uh, this was on the um brookhausen festival and the nice thing is uh, since we were like uh, the uh, the pre 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 opener but we were the first one to play on that festival. So everyone was hot for music. 
So the first one has a much better chance than being in between, which is like a, a much better position. But uh, I, I just remember from the sound check where all the people were already there and I hit a chord on the guitar like, Vroom! and everyone, whoa, <laughs> this is because everyone was so hot. And then this was the biggest experience. And uh, through our drummer, we actually found even pictures of this. I'm going to put this on our Facebook site and on our YouTube channel. Um, this was really our biggest gig. Awesome stuff here on the After Hours Cafe on the Delaware Valley Radio Network. As I mentioned, I had uh, had the opportunity to interview one of the members of this uh, kind of lost but rediscovered band uh, from Germany from the early 80s. And that mis most mysterious song on the internet that you're hearing is not mysterious anymore. Here it is. It's the song called Subways of Your Mind. This is Fex, the most mysterious song on the internet, no more, here on the After Hours Cafe on RDV. Enjoy it. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The FM radio debut here in the U.S. of the most mysterious song on the Internet by Fex is the name of the group. And the song is called Subways of Your Mind. We hope you enjoy the special presentation of it tonight. And uh, we're going to have the uh, last kind of few minutes, uh, it's not too long, um, of my interview with Michael Hadris coming up right after the uh, the break here. Uh, and uh, we'll play one more song by Fex and then get right back uh, to the show, of course, and uh, play some more great music for you right up until 2 a.m. So thanks for being with us, everyone. Learn more at GetMyFluShot.org. Brought to you by the AMA, CDC, and the Ad Council. Please tell me more about your, your current project. And you're, you're, so I think, you, I believe you do uh, music for TV and film as well. It looks like you have an amazing studio there. And then you also have a project called Silk Vision that you're currently working on as well. Yes, exactly. So Silk Vision is a project. It's um, basically a duo where um, I can um, compose whatever I want <laughs> and uh, um, work together with a, a female saxophone player who's uh, playing the saxophone and it is a combination of um, uh, rather modern music but it has this melodic uh, and melancholic flair uh, that always my favorite was in music and we're always producing the videos along with it so it's music and picture coming together is there anything else you wanted to share with the audience as far as, you know, like we talked about earlier, their future plans for, for music or any advice for up-and-coming musicians? Yes, well, one thing is we also dug up a live tape uh, where the whole material that we played at that time and that we rehearsed is on it. So we do have quite a pool of songs that we can still work on and uh, re-record uh, that never have been recorded except for the live recording and for musicians well um, I am I, until uh, a few um, uh, um, days ago I also was an unknown musician <laughs> so, so it's hard to give the advice wait for the years and then it will happen <laughs> yeah, that's true <laughs> so but the, the advice I think would be uh, it is difficult to plan success uh, extremely so it is so difficult to predict is what you compose what you play touching someone or not and you can only uh, find out by trying <laughs> yes do you compose something or do you write something that strikes a nerve that is interesting that makes people want to find out more about this piece of music or art and um, this can only uh, be found out by experimenting and uh, trying and also taking risks. So Subways of Your Mind, do, do you know what, it, what it's about exactly? Was it written for a certain kind of thought process, if you will? Well, uh, Tura, he's the composer, so uh, he could answer this best, but I know uh, what his opinion is on this. It is the the mixture of the no future atmosphere at that time. Remember, it was the Cold War yeah. in, in, in the 80s. Everyone thought eventually someone is going to hit the red button. <laughs> so this, this was the atmosphere. 
And so the song had this Sun Will Never Shine parts in it, but also the young and restless dreamers. So there are always positive lines in it that uh, um, give a contrast to the uh, melancholic part of the song. And I think this, this contrast, this mixture of positive and fear makes the song so attractive. Yeah. Yes, the simplicity, somehow it has a simplistic charm to it um, and it transports this, this atmosphere. Do you, do you feel like the um, political climate back then had any effect on you being able to get your music out there? Even though you did win a contest, of course, but do you feel yeah. like it could have it could have had a broader reach had it not been for the the uh, the political climate back in the early eighties? No, I don't think that the political climate has had anything to do with it. it uh, you need to remember um, Germany after the war. Even the eighties seemed to be quite long after the war. Um, always had a complex not to stick out. Yes, be remote. We did terrible, or Germany did terrible things to the world. So, yeah, don't. And so everyone was very reserved in pushing out things. And this changed uh, with a few bands, like with the Nina Band, with Kraftwerk, and so on. Uh, they made it big, but it took a long time. Uh, and I think Germany is finally there. That now in the 2020s or even after 2000. There is a more mature and more self-esteemed um, relationship to um, showbiz and to, to music. And um, so I think it was not the specific uh, political uh, scenario at that time, but it was the general post-war mentality that had to be overcome. This is Community Radio, WRDV-FM, 89.3 Warminster Hatboro, 107.3 Philadelphia, 105.7 Lansdale, 97.1 Ben Salem, WTHA-FM, 88.1 Berlin, and WLBS-FM, 91.7 Bristol Levittown. The RDV Radio Network. This RDVFM thanks Town and Country Players Theater in Buckingham for supporting community radio in the Delaware Valley. Hi, this is Michael Hedrich uh, from FEX, and you're listening to Pete C and the After Hours Cafe on WRDVFM. <laughs> This is the After Hours Cafe here on the Delaware Valley Radio Network. PT with you. I hope you enjoyed that special uh, special presentation tonight. You know, I had been wanting for a long time, uh, because there is another version of that Subways of Your Mind, the most mysterious song on the internet, as people used to call it. They don't call it that anymore, because we, you know, a user on Reddit ended up finding what it was. Uh, but there actually is another version out there. There's a, there's a live version from a concert from 1985. Uh, there's also a live recording of when they uh, the band actually got together last week and uh, went into the NDR studios over in Germany and actually perform the song. Uh, that, that version's out there for you to check out on YouTube. But then there's another version that I guess was either a demo or another version that maybe the agency had that they took to the radio station to have them, pl have them play. And, you know, I had it in the can, as we say in the radio uh, industry, uh, in my, you know, library here ready to play. And I'm, I just I wanted to wait until we had a lot more information on it. And, you know, lo and behold, everything blew up last week like that. So uh, glad that, you know, glad that this song was found. Again, it's called Subways of Your Mind by Fex, um, F -A -F -E -X. Uh, you can, uh, I believe they have a, a Facebook and a YouTube page. If they don't yet, they will very soon. Um, and I know that uh, Michael, who was gracious enough to grant me that interview, uh, also, you know, they have future, the band has future plans to get together and re record a lot of their material. Uh, you can find three or four of their songs, including the three I played tonight, um, out there on uh, YouTube as well if you wanted to listen to them. Uh, he opened for Eric Burden for, uh, of the Animals, which I thought was really cool, that band. Uh, and then he played. Played in, he studied at Penn, Penn State uh, in Happy Valley out there, and then uh, played in some of the clubs not only uh, in uh, Penn, at, out there in Penn State, but also uh, in the Philadelphia area. 
So I'll have to check our, uh, maybe I'll check our FM Audition archives uh, and see if uh, we have any Mr. Fret songs. Maybe they recorded some material. So kind of cool that there was a Philly connection here. Uh, so we hope you enjoyed that exclusive interview. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks for sticking with us here on the After Hours Cafe. We are live until 2 o'clock. Great mix of music from the 50s through the 80s.